I just feel the need to mention that I literally never wear pink, but it felt only right since we're talking about an elegant Venusian sign today. Hola my beautiful lotus flowers, welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're into nerding out on everything astrology, spirituality, and self-transformation, this is a community for you. Today we're talking all about having Mercury in Libra and what this means is at the exact moment you were born, you had the planet Mercury moving through the zodiac constellation of Libra. For those of you who aren't quite familiar with the energy of Mercury and what it means in astrology, I will have an intro portion, a pre-recorded intro portion before this video about Mercury itself, and then we'll move on to talk about the general traits of somebody who has Mercury in Libra, and we'll finish the video off with a couple empowering tips for anybody watching this who has this placement, or if you know somebody who does, the empowerment tips might better help you to connect with them and know more about how they work. So I'm not just gonna leave you with a few traits and say, oh, you're this way, you're that way, and then just leave you hanging. I will have some advice at the end for you if you feel like you struggle with this placement. Now, for a brief introduction to the planet Mercury in case you're not familiar with it. Mercury is considered the quote-unquote messenger planet in astrology, ruling over thought, communication, how information is mentally processed, our intellect, routines, and our mental instincts. Mercury is actually the ruler of two zodiac signs, both Gemini and Virgo. Gemini is an air sign and Virgo is an earth sign. Wherever Mercury is at in your natal chart will tell you how you express yourself in regards to what Mercury rules over, such as how you communicate, how you think, etc. But it is very important to pay attention to whether Mercury was retrograde at the time you were born, as this can definitely alter how you express your Mercury placement. And the way that you identify that is there will be a little Rx symbol next to your planet. If you're looking at a birth chart that provides this information, you'll see a little retrograde symbol next to this planet symbol, and that will tell you if it was retrograde at the time you were born. This can manifest for so many different ways for so many different people, so I won't be talking about if the planet is retrograde, but a lot of times the traits I talk about, a lot of opposite traits can manifest for this person. Like for example, say the Mercury placement usually makes the person really good at communication. Well, if it's retrograde, then there's potential that maybe you struggle a lot with communication instead. So keep that in mind. Now for the general traits of somebody who has Mercury in Libra. Before we talk about them, it's important to remember that Libra is the cardinal air sign ruled by Venus, symbolized by the scales. First, material success, their reputation, and love tend to stay on their minds. The reason for this is because Libra, like I mentioned, is ruled by Venus, and we are talking about Mercury, the planet of the mind, the mental process, communication style, etc. We're talking about that planet moving through a constellation that is ruled by Venus, which is the planet of material wealth, creation, creativity, beauty, etc. When it comes to having Mercury moving through the sign of Libra, a lot of these people are going to think heavily about their success and how they look to other people, how they act to other people. They're going to make sure that in their interactions with others, they're going to be very usually very considerate of the way that they interact with other people. And they're also going to think almost very business minded about the way that they move through certain things in life. Like if they deal with a certain situation, they are going to take into account the way that it might benefit their future. For example, um, Mercury deals a lot with decision making and how we process information and make decisions and then communicate it. So say somebody with this placement is trying to choose which university they should go to. Most likely, they're probably going to choose the university that number one, impresses other people and looks very studious or very prestigious or brings them a lot of notoriety to go to. Second, they're definitely going to want to go somewhere that 
makes practical sense for their future because when it comes to having Mercury meeting Venus, this person thinks a lot about bringing things into fruition, about having those material things, that success, whatever this person deems success to be. Just remember, just because you have this placement doesn't mean you're all going to consider success the same thing. But the general idea of thinking about how you're going to manifest certain things or how you're going to create the success can factor a lot into your decisions. And then when it comes to love, Venus is the number one planet when it comes to romantic connections and just connections in general when it comes to other people. Not only that, Libra is also the seventh house sign. So this deals a lot with social interactions and our social life and our partnerships. So having Mercury here means that this person will also be very focused on their partnerships, whether it is romantic, whether it is their own family, their friendships, or whether it's business as well. So naturally this person can be very social and can be very good at kind of dictating their environment just based off of their social interactions. Second, they will naturally have a more sociable nature, being quite flirtatious and charming as well. When we're dealing with having Mercury and any of the air signs, which the air signs are Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, we're going to have somebody who may have a knack for being more social, or they think very intellectually about things and they're able to communicate their ideas well to other people. However, or whatever form it takes for you, for a Mercury and Libra specifically, Libras are known to be the very charming and flirtatious air sign. Not always, they can be a bit more shy as well, which I mean shyness to a lot of people can also come off as charming or flirtatious. but. When it comes to Mercury in Libra, this person is going to be very good, usually, at dictating their social environment. I mentioned this briefly at the end of the previous trait when I was talking about them really thinking about their partnerships and being able to communicate in a way that heavily affects and heavily improves their partnerships since Libra is a huge sign dealing with our relationships with other people. But since we have <laughs> the air sign that is ruled by Venus, which again is that more goddess-like, beauty-like, very aesthetic type planet in astrology, we have that kind of channel through the way that they tend to communicate or think about things. So they may not even mean to seem very flirtatious or they may just have a very kind and gentle way of speaking to others, but however it comes off, it usually falls under the category of being quite charming and maybe even alluring to other people. Whether they're conscious of it or not, this is a trait that definitely tends to hold true for Mercury and Libras. Now, there's some Mercury and Libras that might be quite like, they might be kind of shy, but they tend to just know how to communicate in a very gentle, sweet way. And then there's probably some Mercury and Libras that know how to flirt and know how to really affect the way somebody interacts with them because they just know how to make them feel good. They know how to make them feel beautiful. They know how to make somebody feel special and therefore they own the so social interaction consciously. And then there's others that may own the social interaction unconsciously because they're just naturally sweet. Third, they're probably not afraid to speak their mind and follow their own vision, but will often manage to do so in a more thoughtful or classy manner. We can compare what I mean by that by a more thoughtful and classy manner to maybe somebody who has Mercury in like Sagittarius or maybe even Aries where they tend to be more upfront or maybe even a little harsh with the way that they communicate or go about their actions. So when it comes to someone with Mercury in Libra, they Libra is the cardinal sign. So cardinal signs usually are natural born leaders or they tend to not be afraid to take the initiative or take the road less traveled because they usually have the confidence to do what they wish. And they will do what they wish even if other people don't agree with it. 
And that's usually what naturally makes them good leaders, whether they realize it or not. So when it comes to Mercury and Libra specifically, the way that this channels itself, we're going to see somebody who people almost naturally will want to follow. They can tend to have a very uh, elegant way or classy or well-mannered way of carrying themselves. They're not usually going to communicate in a way that's consider very messy or they're going to be very good about the way that they communicate with others. Let's take another air sign for example if we have Mercury in Gemini. This person has a very flighty sign which is the flight of the sign of Gemini and then we have a very active planet for the mind and you combine the two and you're gonna get somebody who almost communicates erratically like they are very like fast at talking they think very fast they switch subjects super fast and you just it can be hard to follow what they're trying to tell you or it can be hard for them to focus but when it comes to mercury and libra mercury in this cardinal sign they're going to be very zoned in on what they're thinking about and they're going to have a very eloquent way of communicating it. Mercury and Libras can be well known for just speaking eloquently and being able to deliver a message very well. They might even be very good public speakers because of this and they also bring that charismatic nature to the way that they speak to other people like we spoke about in the previous trait. So when you combine all of those, you have somebody who is really channeling that natural born leadership. This may be somebody who stands up for a cause that they believe in, maybe some type of activism, because they're not afraid to speak out on what it is they believe in, but they also do value that justice and speaking out to have justice for other people as well. If you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button for me, subscribe button, and the bell if you want to see future videos like this one. And be sure you leave a comment down below if you have Mercury in Libra or if you know somebody who does. I love to know who's watching. Fourth, they tend to seek balance and be very diplomatic, thinking of situations in terms of fairness and justice. So this is where the symbol of the scales comes into play and really channels itself through Mercury. Since Libra is symbolized by the scales, what that means is that balance is huge to them. So even though they're not afraid to lead, they can be very sociable and whatnot, at the core of a lot of the things that they do and a lot of the decisions they make and how they decide to go about things is going to depend on the fairness of it. So like I mentioned at the end of the previous trait when I was talking about how they may be involved in activism and whatnot, when it comes to career, somebody with a Mercury in Libra could easily have a career as maybe like a lawyer or something like that because they're going to be one, very good with their words and have a great way of communicating it, like I mentioned before. But not only that, justice and fairness are at the core of the things that they do. And things such as being a lawyer or maybe even being in some type of political job or political position will really showcase their Mercury and Libra traits very well. But say we're not even talking about career. When it comes to their personal relationships, because once again, relationships, partnerships in general are very important to Libras. But with a Mercury and Libra, this person, even if it's just, you know, a one-on-one -on -one intimate conversation with someone they love or with a partner of theirs, whoever it is, they're going to always be trying to take in the other perspective. They really want to understand all sides. They're not going to just shut somebody down because they themselves don't believe in what they're saying. They really do seek to understand other perspectives and process that and use it to come to decisions or use it to grow their personal relationships. So, you know, if you're with somebody romantically that has Mercury and Libra, you may notice this. Or if you're a Mercury and Libra yourself, you may notice that being able to look at different perspectives and balance out the options and balance out the decisions really allows you to have peace and comfort in coming to a decision. And this it's funny because this is often why Libras are also considered bad decision makers. Um, and someone with Mercury and Libra might struggle with decisions as well because they really want to look at every possibility before they reach a conclusion. Now let's talk about some ways that somebody with this placement can empower themselves. 
Number one, overcome the need you may feel to be seen as perfect or keep a good reputation according to other people. Someone with this placement can easily find themselves getting too caught up in what other people think or how other people may perceive their actions or their words. Even though this is a cardinal sign, like I mentioned, diplomacy and fairness and just caring for their partnerships in general tends to be at the core of everything that this person does. So they can easily become way too invested in how other people are viewing them and become too anxious or worried about that. There can even be a a deep rooted need to for some reason impress other people as well with the things that you say and the decisions you make it's almost like it can be comparable to mercury and leo because mercury and leo just really wants to be heard and they want to like have say over their domain but that's kind of more of like a, a selfish thing for the mercury and leo whereas mercury and libra it can be very selfless to their own detriment to the point that they are becoming too wrapped up in like what other people are thinking like say they say the wrong thing you know we all make mistakes they will probably take that really hard and think oh, i should have thought more about that i could have done more research i kind of looked into my other options and they'll just be way too hard on themselves and potentially self-sabotage when it comes to this. My advice is to really work towards being in a mental space where you can become aware of when you start to self-sabotage and think too much about what other people are gonna say, what they're gonna think, how they're gonna perceive you. And notice when you start to do that because it can be almost subconscious. If you, for example, find yourself um, feeling very embarrassed when people stare at you. I don't know, this is just a random example, but apply it to your life how you will. Say you're just very embarrassed of people staring at you and so you dress a certain way and everything so that way they don't stare at you or whatever. But ask your, but you wish you could wear this outfit or that outfit. Think to yourself, why am I so worried about, and you can even write about this too, like journal it because it'll help get it out of your head but really think like, why am I so worried about them staring at me? Okay, so I'm worried about them staring at me because I don't want them to think I'm this. Why do I care if they think I'm this? And then just keep breaking it down like that and get to the core, get to the root of that feeling. Cause a lot of times there's no real like, either it's born from something in our childhood or growing up or it's born from a memory we had that we don't want to experience again but majority of the time it's based in the past and based off of one experience or maybe a few experiences compared to a million different experiences where people did not think that way about you but those few bad experiences we allow it to completely hinder and transform the rest of our lives and the way that we live second regularly find ways to reconnect with yourself. Libras in general, whatever significant placement somebody has that involves Libra, are known for thinking heavily about others and what they think and potentially even being a major people pleaser. What can happen here is this person can easily become disconnected from themselves, from the core of who they are and what they want and this is kind of intertwined with my previous point about making sure that you're not allowing everybody else's judgment of you to dictate all of your actions and your life path but not only that like i mentioned in the traits this person really wants to weigh out their options they can be so they can have such a difficult time at making decisions for their life or whatever it may be because they have that typical Libra trait that we all know where they really want to look at option A, B, C, D and have they can almost find an endless amount of options and want to research them all and look into them all but then get even more confused and not come to a decision. So I really, really fully 100% feel that journaling is a big thing for any of the Mercury air sign placements but including Mercury and Libra, journaling could really help you to pinpoint what it is that you want. Because if all of this crazy activity is just happening in your head and you're trying to come to a decision just in your head, all those thoughts, all of that information you're taking in, all those decisions, all 
of other people's opinions, all of that gets stacked and bundled and jumbled inside your head. And we may not realize it, but we become even more lost because of that. So definitely journaling and having a lot of time to yourself so you don't lose yourself in all those decisions and people's opinions, etc. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and the bell. And you can also hop over to the Blue Lotus Facebook community where we talk more about using astrology and spirituality for self-transformation. If you want more videos to help you on your astrological and spiritual journey, make sure you watch these videos if you haven't already, or you can head to my playlist list to watch even more and for additional content you can head over to my instagram at marissa LeBlue to see my journey here on the internet until i see you next time thank you again for being here adios